Happy Resurrection Day to each of you. And we are excited today to have a baptism of four people. We'll talk about that in a moment. I wanted to share with you a thought, but before I did, I wanted to, to ask you to think about that passage in the Gospel of John you just heard, particularly the line that says, as Jesus said to Mary, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. Come back to that in just a moment. Teilhard de Chardin was a 20th century French philosopher and Jesuit priest who had been trained as a paleontologist and a geologist in his early days of study. He was a great mystic of the church and a scientist, and he, he often asked why so many good, sincere persons did not believe in God. And his answer was sympathetic, not judgmental. And he came to the conclusion of why many people do not believe in God is that he felt that they had not heard God in the correct way. They not have, have not heard God in the correct way. My mother, growing up, went for 19 years to First Baptist Church in downtown Dallas with W.A. Criswell. She went with her grandmother for 19 years, and she did not grow up knowing God in the right way, because the God to her in the Southern Baptist Church at the time was the God to fear, the judgmental God, the God to be afraid of, fear the Lord. And yet, if you really look at the Hebrew word fear, it's not to be afraid of, it's to be in awe of. So W.A. Crystal would sit there on the chancel steps and kneel down in a white suit and red handkerchief and pull it up and pound the pavement, pound the stairs and say, woe is me, a sinner. I'm a sinner before you, God. I'm wicked for my mother's birth. <clears throat> Luckily, that didn't drive my mother away from the church or from God. She knew that that particular understanding of God was not a healthy one. And that, like the Chardin said, she did not understand God in the correct way. Some of you here today, sitting in this church right now, may have been raised in a church that, that had the same concept, the same notion of, of, you're going to hell, you better get right with God. And yet, for so many of us, we find that to be empty. The Episcopal Church is one where we are an Easter people. Even though we have the corpus on the cross here at St. Martin's, it is not about Good Friday. Our faith is not about Good Friday. It's about today, Easter Sunday, the resurrection, the limitless possibilities that God, being raised from the dead to provide eternal life for us, provides for each of us every day, not only when we leave this earth, but each day living where we can hold on to Jesus, unlike Mary in the Gospel, where we can cling to him daily, but we can tell the story to each other that we have seen the Lord who has risen. While we do that, we, we pray in the colic to, we ask God to help us to die daily to sin. Now sin is, a, is anything that takes us away from God. Sin is, is part of our human nature, including clergy, bishops. But we try not to. And when we falter, we we, we, we talk with God and we are assured of his forgiveness. We also do it corporately in church. We don't do it on Easter Sunday because we focus more on the resurrection. But we pray to die daily to sin so that what? For what reason? So that we might evermore live in the joy of the resurrection. We crave God. We need him, and he wants us to need him. The great patristic father, St. Augustine of Hippo in the 5th century, and Hippo, by the way, is the modern day Algeria on the northeast coast. He once said, Tu nos fecite ate in cor in est, 
Dona Cruz Priata de Antetemi. Which means you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. If we think about our lives, and I know for my own sake, when I've not been close to God, things don't go right. I fall all over myself. My human failings are renewed, and I see them over and over. But deep down, as people that we are created by our Creator God, we do deep down, if we're honest with ourselves, and we take away all the, the shellac or the veneer of all that terrible theology we might have grown up with, we do crave God. We need Him every day. That's why you're here today. I have a book called Open Mind, Open Heart by Thomas Keating, who was a great Trappist monk in Snowmass, Colorado. He reminds us that when we pray and have a relationship with God, we have to exercise it, just like we're to go and exercise a muscle at the gym. We have to exercise and deepen that, that conversation, but, but often, more importantly, listening. And some of us say, well, I pray to God and he doesn't listen and he must not be real because he doesn't answer my prayers and I prayed for this and that. And yet in the silence, my friends, sometimes that is the answer that God knows that we need. I'm still forming you, as he says to us. I'm still shaping you. Not yet. Not yet. Listen. Pray. Walk with me deeply. And if we think about our lives and we look back in retrospect, we, we know that God was right all along if we're really honest with ourselves, don't we? So we need that relationship, that prayer. But going back to the way my mother grew up, and maybe some of you, I'm going to share with you a thought by Keating. He is very bold and very blunt, and he says this. God is not some remote, inaccessible, implacable being who demands instant perfection from his creatures and whose love we must make ourselves worthy. He's not a tyrant to be obeyed out of terror, nor a policeman who's ever on the watch to catch us when we make a mistake. He's not a harsh judge to apply a verdict of guilty and so, Keating says, we should relate to him more and more, deeper and deeper into the spirit, not of reward versus punishment, but living more into the divine love of what it means to follow God on a daily basis, and specifically Christ. There is a play of the divine love, he says, a play, joy. Look at the current pope, the joy he has versus the prior pope, the joy the blessing. Our reading from Isaiah, the 25th chapter, said that, that we wait for the Lord. And when we do, let us be glad as we wait, rejoice in his salvation. And we have waited for a while, have we not? 40 days in Lent. And if you really think about it, Lent is kind of a microcosm of our lives because we wait. We wait until that eternal day when we take our last breath and go to heaven to see God face to face, to understand what it means to, to live a life of abundance forever in eternity. Luke, the author of Acts, tells us today that God shows no partiality, whether it be Greek or Jew, Gentile or Jew, that he's the Lord of all. And everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So we can take away that, that image that maybe we grew up with like my mother and put that aside. And all are welcome into God's kingdom. There's no footnote, there's no parentheses, there's no end note on that. And we know that it's a place of eternal bliss. And how do we know that other than just conjecturing? Well, we know because people who have been on the operating table and have died 
and have gone to see the light and seen themselves hovering above the table come back and tell stories and stories over and over and over again about the most beautiful, blissful type of place that we could possibly imagine. Steve Jobs' last three words when he died was, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. A man who died recently and came back talked about how when he, he went to heaven, he saw God with her arms outstretched, being a mother figure. I wonder if some of the our friends who are male-centered would like to hear that. Maybe your former diocese, Bishop Iker. We'll have a little surprise, I guess. If that's true, I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. God's God. But we anthropomorphize God to try to deal and grapple with this mystery. This mystery of the Word made flesh. can hold on to him every day, every moment, not just when it's convenient for us, but when we need him. Not only that, but to share him. We have 42 different ministries here at St. Martin in the Fields. And it's not about priesthood or bishops or deacons. It's about the laity. It's about you who have a call to ministry. Find where God has planted in your heart, what type of ministry, what type of fellowship, what type of engagement, where you can find a place in this house of God, because this is the house of God open to all people. And in just a few moments, we're going to baptize three boys and a girl, Samuel, Emma, Jake, and Justin. After the baptism with water in the name of the Trinity, I will take some chrismation oil on my thumb and make the sign of the cross on their forehead and tell them that they are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. So if Samuel, Emma, Jake, and Justin have nothing ever to do with God or Christ again, he will have something to do with them because all that God is about is love divine love. And even if they or we make a deathbed confession, God says, come to me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you because I love you. And anyone who tells you that God is other than love is a charlatan, an imposter. That is not who God is. They might think I'm an imposter for saying that, but I tend to have a high probability of thinking that I'm right. <laughs> Maybe wrong, but everything I see about Jesus Christ and the prophets and the message is that God does things out of love, not about rules and ordinances and, and regulations and this and that and canons and all that, rubrics and so forth. Look at Jesus. He healed on the Sabbath. He didn't care healed because of love, because someone needed healing. That's the kind of God that I want to worship. That's the kind of God I believe in. The other, the kind my mother was exposed to, no thank you. Even though Mary in the gospel could not hold on to Jesus because he had not yet ascended, we can hold on to him every day. If we allow ourselves to, if we're honest with ourselves, because he always has his arms outstretched to us. And thank God for that. He doesn't keep track. He doesn't mark down our sins, no matter what they are. That's the beauty of this God that we call 
God and Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, which comes to us and is in each one of us. And we give great thanks for that on this day of resurrection and joy. We have seen the Lord. Let us go forth and tell the world about Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.